a long time ago. <laughs> in a, well, oh wait, hold on, in a, <laughs> let me try that again. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Star Wars! Hey y'all, I'm Madeline Monaghan, but you can call me Maddie. Welcome back to my channel and happy May 4th! May the 4th be freaking with you! I have a lot of Star Wars stuff and seeing it all laid out before me has realized how much Star Wars stuff I actually have. As you all might have guessed from my attire and my <laughs> things in the back, I am a huge kind of ridiculous Star Wars fan. Um, I was born and raised a Star Wars fan. I've been watching the original trilogy for as long as I can remember. Like some of my earliest memories are me running out of the room screaming when the uh, Wampa, is that what it's called, from episode 5 comes in and like kills the Tauntaun and takes Luke. Yeah, yeah, great times. <laughs> Nightmare inducing first 10 minutes of a movie. Um, and I'm realizing, looking at all of my stuff, I have a lot of stuff from the sequels back here. So I have the art books from the sequels, and then a lot of my ships are from the sequels. I have a couple pop figures from the sequels. I don't know, I just have a lot of sequel stuff. But that doesn't mean I don't love the other Star Wars movies, so put that disclaimer out there right now. So today, in honor of Star Wars Day, May the 4th, I am going to rank all nine of the Skywalker Saga in the order of which I personally like them. Now, another disclaimer I'm going to throw out there is that I enjoy all the Star Wars movies. Everything in the Skywalker Saga, there's a lot of it that I enjoy. There's no movie that I despise. There are movies that I've been disappointed in, but not movies that I despise. The way I'm ranking this is the movies in order of the events or the scenes or the story or just the elements to it that I think make it a better film. We're gonna start with number nine and go to number one. <laughs> so ironically, I guess, <laughs> number nine on my Skywalker Saga ranking list is episode one, which is The Phantom Menace. The movie is Okay, here's the thing. Phantom Menace does actually have some really good moments in it. Like, the first, like, five minutes of the pod racing scene is really cool. I love Darth Maul. I love Qui-Gon. All hail Ewan McGregor. You know, and it has a lot of scenes in it that I feel like are actually really good. Um, like the scene where Anakin says goodbye to his mom. I, you know, that scene actually does kind of get me emotional. And it's kind of a sweet scene, you know. And so it's just kind of like the little things like that. But the reason it's at the bottom is because it is so slow. It is such a slow movie. And Jar Jar, just freaking Jar Jar. Like anything with Jar Jar is down here. I, he was, I don't know what the heck his character is because he doesn't contribute anything to the story. Never has, never will. The movie has like a lot in it that just, it, it's frustrating because it's like you can see what they were trying to do and it just kept falling flat on a lot of fronts. So that is why is it, it is at the bottom, but like I said, there's still a lot of really great moments in it. The music, the, like the Duel of Fates, and the fight between Darth Maul and Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, that's a fantastic, fantastic fight scene. Love it to pieces. Love that music. Phantom Menace, number nine. So then number eight, we have another prequel. <laughs> It is episode two, Attack of the Clones. Really, it suffers the same way that um, The Phantom Menace did. It's just that it's so slow. And I'm sorry, just the scenes with <laughs> Anakin and Padme are so cringeworthy. It's like, oh God, please just stop talking to each other. But for me, kind of the saving grace of that movie is uh, Count Dooku. Chris Frilly is Count Dooku is fantastic. Love him. Really, any scenes with Obi-Wan, again, all hail Ewan McGregor. And I will admit, actually, the climax of Attack of the Clones is really good. Starting kind of from when they're in that arena with the weird monster things uh, towards like the end of the movie, that entire segment of the film is actually pretty good. And it's a lot of fun actually. I love the, again, I love the final fight between Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Count Dooku. I just, and then Yoda comes in and it's just cool. It's cool. It's really cool. So that's again kind of the saving grace for the movie. Everything up until then is just like, can this movie just be about Obi-Wan? <laughs> Where's our Obi-Wan series by the way? Is that happening? And number seven is our first 
sequel to make it onto this list, it is The Rise of Skywalker. Now before all of you get mad at me for putting The Rise of Skywalker before Attack of the Clones and Phantom Menace, although can you get mad at me for that actually? Anyway, I'm just gonna say I did really enjoy The Rise of Skywalker, and that is not to say that I am ignoring major problems of it. It is a very fast-paced movie. The movie does not give any time for any scene to really breathe. And so that I feel like was kind of the major fault of the movie is that you're not really given time as an audience to like really absorb what the characters are absorbing and it's just kind of like here's this, now here's this, now here's this. That being said, there are a lot of really funny and fun moments in the movie. There's a lot of good character moments. Honestly, it's, there, there's just enough in it. And, you know, he's up there with Ewan McGregor, so all hail Adam Driver. He really does kind of give a really good performance in that. And so watching anything that he does and then watching like the sen sins, the scenes, not the sins, no, with <laughs> him and Ray, you know, because they work really well off of each other, and so it was kind of fun to watch that back and forth. Plus, the fight on the Death Star was pretty cool. That was kind of cool to see the ruins of the Death Star. So now we're on to number six, which is... What did I say it was? Episode 7, The Force Awakens, so yet another sequel. Yeah, this movie is just a rehash of A New Hope. Like, th that really is what it is. It's, it's a movie that played it very safe. Um, to a new generation of Star Wars fans and the old generation of Star Wars fans. I understand the want to play it safe. I wish they hadn't played it as safe as they did. But because this was the introduction of a new trilogy and new characters, it was kind of refreshing at the same time. Like even though it was like, it was a new hope, it was like you had new characters. You know, you had this weird looking villain who sounded cool and looked cool and then you took off his mask and you're like, what? <laughs> That's what he looks like? Not expecting that. You know, and then you had like Rey and the mystery around her, you know, of course you brought in kind of your, your old characters, you had, I, when I say old, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, <laughs> but you had like Han Solo, you had Leia, at the end you had Luke, so you know, you kind of, you had your original three, but they didn't feel like they were training wheels for the movie. They kind of, instead of being there to be like, I'm just here to sell movie tickets, it was more like, no, they actually had a purpose for being in the story. All the new characters they introduced, I liked it. I saw the movie four times in theaters. My first official date with my husband was going to see The Force Awakens. So it will always have a special place in my heart. Now we're on to number five, which is our first original Star Wars movies, episode six, Return of the Jedi. Now when I was younger, Return of the Jedi was actually my favorite Star Wars movie and as I've gotten older and I watched it again, I was like, this is just a new hope! This is just episode four again! We've built a Death Star! Great! We've built it with even a bigger vent this time so a whole ship can fit through it. <laughs> oh, so it was very much a repeat and I will admit, kind of the climax of the movie of like the Ewoks on Endor, it's not as cool as it used to be. Like I love all the ATSTs and I love kind of the inventive way that the Ewoks take out the ATSTs and I love the humor that's in like the entire battle scene too, especially with like Han and Chewie and uh, 3PO and R2. It's just like the Ewoks just take over so much of it. It's like Okay, with like the, we get the teddy bears. <laughs> You're trying to sell toys. Please take the teddy bears away. <laughs> I just, I loved that we saw the Emperor. That we saw Palpatine for really the first time because in episode five he was, um, what are those things called? Where they're see through. It was a hologram. That's what it is. It's a hologram. So he was a hologram. So you didn't actually get to see him. And when you do see him in episode six, he's not like this big, like imposing monster or something, but he's still creepy. You can tell he has something up his sleeve. Something's going on in that wrinkly old brain of his. That's, I think, what makes him the most unsettling is that he's, he's always planning. Plus, I also just love Darth Vader. Like, let's be real. Darth Vader in that movie. So now for number four which is another prequel. Shocking, I know. It is Revenge of the Sith, and I'm gonna get so much hate for putting Revenge of the Sith above an original, but you know what? We're doing it, we're going for it, 
and this is why. Revenge of the Sith was the first prequel movie that actually felt like a Star Wars movie. The opening battle, the opening space battle is a lot of fun. The movie actually does a good job of showing the progression of Anakin's descent into darkness. You see him starting to crumble under the pressure of the dark and him starting to see the appeal of it. And Hayden Christensen does not do that bad a job of acting in this movie. I'm gonna be real here. He actually does a really good job when he does not have to open his mouth. When none of the characters have to open their mouths. <laughs> It's really good! As soon as you hear the Emperor say, Execute Order 66, your stomach just drops. You are like, ah, well here we go. Now I gotta sit through this. It's a movie that carries a lot of emotional weight, you know? It's kind of one of the, you know, Rise of Skywalker sort of ended sadly as well. Revenge of the Sith is... The move is the one Star Wars movie where there is almost no hope at the end. Literally all the Jedi have been destroyed except for Yoda and Obi-Wan and I guess that kid from Fallen Order. It's the end of the Jedi. The Empire has taken over the galaxy. You know, it's it's one of those movies where it's just it you know that it's to set up the story that comes next, but it just leaves you feeling so sad and that's actually kind of what I like about it is because it is one of the first it is the first Star Wars movie that's left you thinking like wow this whole thing you know kind of sucked for these characters and again all hail Ewan McGregor almost everything about the movie is is good um you know the dialogue is terrible <laughs> As far as like the visuals and like the actors having to rely just on their facial expressions, they all do a really good job. The final battle on Mustafar is awesome! Best Star Wars battle I've ever seen. One of them. It's just, it is really good. Yeah, Revenge of the Sith! So number three, going back to the originals, is A New Hope, episode four. And you know, the original cannot not be in the top five somewhere so you know I put it at number three because you know despite Luke's obnoxious whining I really enjoy it I love old Obi-Wan old Ben Kenobi all hail Alec Guinness <laughs> really they kind of got all the perfect people who could be in this movie you know Carrie Fisher Harrison Ford Mark Hamill like those three are just so iconic now and it's because of this movie and it's because they just fit into those roles so well and you know and Harrison Ford is like the smart ass smuggler and then you've got Leia who's like this you know I don't take your princess which is awesome and then you've got Luke who's just kind of like I need to stop being so whitey it's just a lot of fun and it, it is a very very fun movie and Honestly, I don't know exactly what they were trying to do when they set out to make Star Wars, but they did a fantastic job of making a wonderfully funny, bright, colorful, adventurous film. Number two. <laughs> I've talked about this movie before and how much I love it. My number two is episode eight, The Last Jedi. <laughs> And the reason why it's The Last Jedi, I talked about this when I did it for my movie box episode, but I just really enjoy the characters in this movie. I just really liked that Ryan Johnson was trying to present a real Star Wars film and, you know, something that advanced the story and advanced the characters as opposed to cater to the fans. And I, I liked the changes he had, he made to Rey's story where she was a no one. You know, that, that kind of was nice. And actually, if you're going for the balance between Kylo Ren and Rey, you have one who's from a legacy who never wanted to be and one who's from nothing who always wanted to be from a legacy. So it's like, you know, they sort of balance each other out in that sense. And I liked that. There was a lot of time and dedication given to the two leads in that, and there were a lot of interesting character developments in the film. Plus, cinematically, the film is freaking beautiful. Like, it is stunning. Like, the Battle of Crate with all the red, and it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful movie. <laughs> it's, it's just really pretty to look at. It's nice to see Finn have a story that doesn't revolve around red. 
night. It's just a fun movie and there are just so many great moments in it. There's like the throne room scene, you have the smashing of Kylo Ren's helmet. We got Porgs. Some great like opening moments too with the space battle. And you get to really see Poe's flying, which I didn't even know Poe flying an X-Wing could be that cool. And Ryan Johnson made it cool. Like, it's just cool. And it had some great humor in it, you know? And it, there really was just a lot to it that I loved that really overshadows the parts of the movie that don't really make sense. It's two and a half hours of awesome, pretty, cinematic character development. And it's lovely and it's beautiful and it will always be in my top three. The moment you have all been waiting for. If you've done your math correctly, you know that there is only one movie that remains and I think it appropriately belongs at the top of my list because it is the movie that gave me nightmares as a child and as we all know when a movie gives you nightmares as a child it's going to be one of your favorite movies when you're older. I don't know if that works for everybody else, but it works for me. My number one is episode five, The Empire Strikes Back. I, I mean, what can I say about a Empire Strikes Back? It, it, it's just... It. <laughs> From the first 10 minutes of the film, it really just kind of draws you in because you've got the whole Wampa thing, you've got the humor and like kind of the, you know, romantic tension between Han and Leia. You've got this humor, but you've got a mystery. You don't know who Yoda is, what's in the Dagobah system, what's a Wampa. <laughs> Luke can use the Force now. I guess he can use it more now. And so you immediately have all these like layered mysteries um, in the first 10 minutes of the movie and it keeps you invested throughout the film. There's more pressure on the characters and it's interesting to watch how they deal with that pressure. Then of course, you know, you have our good friend Lando Calrissian who Everybody loves Lando. I love Lando at least. Lando is awesome. But it's just also a very well paced movie, surprisingly. Well, that final confrontation between Vader and Luke, and it's just so stressful to watch. You still get the same feeling of I'm on the edge of my seat, even though I know what's gonna happen. And so, major kudos to. I don't actually remember who directed that one. Major kudos to them. That was, you know, that that's really good pacing. That's really good buildup of suspense. And honestly, episode five just had so much of that. And I think that's kind of why it works the best for me is because it's a movie that really does take its time. And it takes its time to breathe and kind of let decisions and moments really settle in for both the characters and the audience. I mean, it's still got its cheesy moments. It's Star Wars. Star Wars is always gonna be cheesy, but that's why we love it. That's why it's so fun. And so there you are. The Skywalker Saga ranked according to how I like them. And again, that's not to say that any of them are terrible movies. I enjoy all of them. I think they're all a lot of fun. As you can see, I am a huge Star Wars fan. I will always be a huge Star Wars fan. My kids are going to be huge Star Wars fans, and I'm gonna make sure my grandkids are gonna be huge Star Wars fans. Everybody's just gonna be a Star Wars fan. I should probably work on getting some more original trilogy stuff back here, but Honestly, for now, I, I think it I think it looks okay. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have an awesome time celebrating today with this awesome franchise. I will see you all in my next video, and may the 4th and the Force be with you. Bye! I got my Star Wars! <laughs>